and good evening just check up on the right camera because it doesn't matter how often you practice that you're never quite sure when you click that button are you? uh welcome to vapor trails tv it is sunday the 26th of january 2014 and it's been i say this a lot but again it's been a busy week in the world of e-cigarettes e-cigarette politics and i'm proud to say Easing news that's a fairly new sort of twist we're going to be having a look at uh what what appears to be a kind of follow-on and a bit of enthusiasm from some of the national media not all but some of the national media to talk about e-cigs all of a sudden uh but not until we played the titles And away we go. Right, uh, sitting sort of next to me, but not quite, is Dave Dawn. Dave, how are you? I'm, I'm, I'm well, apart from an orange behind me knee. An orange behind your knee? Yes, I had a fall. Just be careful you don't squash it. I wish the hell I could. Um, no, I'm, I managed to have a fall yesterday. Apparently you should take more water with it. You couldn't have had any more water than I had. <laughs> Fair well, enough. I've got enough for me. And if I, if I whinge, it's because I've moved in my chair and caught it. <laughs> uh, oh, right, yes, uh, I'm, I'm being Skyped. I'll just ignore that. I listen to Chris and nobody else, and then you don't go far wrong, I find. I think it's just the best thing you can do when you're on <laughs> it. Right, uh, so you, you were on the telly during the week, weren't you? Just a bit. Uh, during the ITV Tonight programme and now you covered this in detail including uh, giving uh, Chris Choi a bit of a post-show debriefing Indeed. on Thursday night so I don't think it uh, makes any sense for us to cover the same ground again um, I think I think most vapors have got an interest in this probably like myself have now watched that a couple or three times I understand that they've taken the uh, video down from the yes. ITV player, haven't they? And that's, it's not actually uh, as devious as it sounded. It's because they're redoing some graphics, aren't they? Yeah, well, apparently, and, and I've got, I mean, I've heard from around the houses, nothing official. But apparently, uh, they're getting as much flack from the others as they did from us. Um, which leads me to believe that the whole thing was probably a bit more balanced than a lot of people thought. Um, but I would imagine, and again, it, it's pure speculation on my behalf, it was the, the graphics underneath, you know, the, the lower thirds that you're Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, apparently, the, some of them were definitely wrong because we know that Robert West is not the bloke that, 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 from The Who that was talking. <laughs> um, and it may well be... You mean the guy that looked like the one with the skin complexion out of something about Mary? Yes. Yeah, that's that's the one, yeah. yeah. It definitely wasn't. That wasn't Robert West. I know exactly what Robert West looks like. And uh, they also <laughs> apparently found out in no uncertain terms that they got the graphics at the start of the show completely wrong. As that in that the would be the bit where they'd got a battery this size and the cartomizer that size, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly right. It was a little bit obvious, that one, wasn't it? Just a touch, just a small amount. Yes. I did actually tweet Chris Joy because he was plugging the show the next day and saying, uh, have you seen it? And I, so I tweeted him to ask if the guy who did the graphics had been slapped. 
I didn't get a reply. Um, I think the answer to that is probably <laughs> yes. And, and For, it former well, graphics editor at the ITV Tonight programme. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and it may well be, well, uh, that Robert West was speaking on his own behalf and not on behalf of Cancer Research UK. Um, uh, very true. So if that's the case, all of that will be rectified and remedied before it can go back up. Um, but it, I would love to be a fly on the wall in the Tonight offices, I really would. <laughs> to see what all the, uh, the various different bits of flack from various different places have been. But uh, I do know that the establishment is, is relatively upset. Yes. yes. Good, good. I like that. It, 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 it's about time they got a bit upset, isn't it, instead of well, just us? Too bloody right. I mean, it, it's uh, it's a difficult job, and you know, you know this because we always we have a, a, an obvious bias because we're all heavy hitters. Yeah, want some of us heavier than others. Indeed, uh, but we've got an obvious bias, and it's very, very difficult for us um, to to be unbiased about anything. That's obvious, especially these last twelve months. It's been practically impossible but you still try and do it and i do get how hard it, it would be for somebody who is let's face it a very very newcomer to the scene in chris Choi. two months of not full-time investigation must be a nightmare to do um uh, yeah I, I i agree i agree and and to, to be honest with you you know we, we we don't really want to get into too much of that detail do we because it's no. out there guys it's done OK, now, one thing that it has definitely done that's positive for us, though, and this is what we want to talk a little bit about now, is uh, uh, it's got vaping or electronic cigarettes onto the uh, the grown up news agenda a bit, hasn't it? It's on the main stage now. It was on ITN earlier. Yes. Is it ITN or ITV News? I, I couldn't figure that out earlier. There seems to be the, websites for both. It's the ITN at the ITV News from ITN. Because we were sat there waiting to record it, weren't we? Yes, uh, according to their website, it was scheduled to go out at 6.50. But then you noticed it was really 5.50 on a different schedule. Yeah. And then it actually came on at about five past six, something yes. like that? Yeah. Yes. So if, you, if you know, if by some random chance you actually managed to catch that, well done. If you didn't, it's okay because we recorded it for you. It's only a couple of minutes. Uh, you'll see some faces you recognise in here and uh, and some names that you'll recognise. Um, this it, it, we, we should we should uh, uh, introduce it properly. This is uh, uh, an ITN news piece that went out tonight, um, uh, which is prompted by the announcement this morning of the government to ban sale of e-cigarettes to under 18s. Um, I'll play it. Here it goes. The sale of so-called electronic cigarettes to under-18s is to be banned as part of a clampdown on teenage smoking. An estimated 1.3 million people use them, most as an aid to quit smoking. But as Sajal Carrier reports, some experts say a ban could actually encourage more youngsters to take up the habit. E-cigarettes are seen by thousands as the healthier alternative to real ones but currently they're untested and have no restriction on children buying them. That's about to change with the government about to ban them for under 18s. One leading health expert welcomes the move but says more still needs to be done. I welcome the ban on sales of e-cigarettes to under 18s but only as a first step. The real danger is that this is exploited by the tobacco industry to say that e-cigarettes are for adults only and therefore they become something that kids aspire to. The World Health Organization is already expressing strong concern about e-cigarettes. They're worried that not enough is known about the toxins used in them and their potential risk to users. In fact, they surveyed 85 nations on e-cigs, sharing their unpublished findings with Thursday's ITV Tonight programme. More than a third of the countries, including Brazil, Uruguay and Singapore, have a ban on them. Almost 40% won't allow sales to children and only 15% have conducted scientific research. We're the latest country to introduce the ban, but not everyone agrees e-cigs are a gateway to children smoking real cigarettes. 
I think we need a little bit more clarity. Uh, in some circumstances, say where a parent has a child that is already smoking tobacco, perhaps we, we should allow a bit of parent, parental choice as to whether or not e-cigarettes are appropriate for their children. And at the moment, we're not seeing whether or not that will be prohibited. While all the experts we spoke to agree banning e-cigs from children is sensible, they say there's still confusion for the adults who are using e-cigarettes to quit smoking. Sejal Karia, ITV News. And that was that. So, there was, mm. um, <laughs> well, well, let's start, because, let's face it, there's a bit to go at. <laughs> um, let's start with the fact that um, McKee said something there, and this doesn't happen very often, folks, right? McKee said something there, I actually agreed with. Yes. Uh, basically that by banning the sales of these things to under 18s it will make them something that they associate with being an adult and will therefore aspire to bit like fags really your thoughts on that Dave well I mean with I've, I think everybody knows my stance but just to be clear on this I have never and this is a personal opinion I've never ever agreed with this whole under 18 thing um I've got to be a little bit careful how I put this, but I, my perception is very, very simple. If my grandson, when he gets to 13, 14, decides he wants to be a man, and in order to be a man, he needs to put something in his mouth and blow out a visible whatever it happens to be, I'd far rather that he picked up an e-cig and not a cigarette. It's that simple. And I take on board what John Britton has said so many times and what so many of the experts have said in that nicotine as a habit or even an addiction, if you want to go that far, is not harmful. Yes, in, a, in an ideal world, well, I, actually, somebody posted it on Twitter, uh, Twitter earlier on today, a lovely infographic, and it said, in an ideal world, the safest form of sex is not to have sex. The safest form of smoking is not to smoke, but we have condoms and e-cigs. Live with it. Yeah, I saw that uh, that graphic that went up on Twitter as well, and uh, yeah. it, it's um, <laughs> it's a very valid point. Um, the, the the I guess uh, I, I'm, I'm not actually sure. I've, I've never I've never really given serious consideration to the under 18s thing, and 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 it's primarily because I'm quite a selfish individual and it doesn't bother me. Um, but the uh, you know I, I I see both sides of the coin on it. I guess mm. I'm saying. I do see both sides of the coin. Do you want some guy on the market handing these things out to people uh, who are not smoking? But I think uh, Oliver Kershaw there in the video uh, made a really valid point, which makes you think, you know, we know that GPs will sort of routinely uh, hand out nicotine patches yep. to uh, to 14-year-olds, is it? 12. 12, 12. And it was something low. So, you know, and, and, and the logic there is that, that, you know, if these kids are smoking, then it makes makes sense to give them patches to, to try and get them off. OK, they don't work. And that's another argument. But, uh, you know, in the situation where where you've got a, a youngster who is smoking, then I, I don't see an issue with suggesting they try an electronic cigarette. But you don't really want them on general sale at the market to somebody, you know, to kids who who possibly could, uh, you know, not smoke and just fancy trying a strawberry flavour, for example. Yeah, well, the, the so, thing is, 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 that, is that down to the nicotine or that, that's in the kind of e we use, or is that down to the whole notion that actually you're only meant to breathe in clean air into your lungs and, and exhale whatever comes out? My view on it is that, that as far as we know, and I know it's even this isn't a... a a stated fact anymore you know it is um it is uh, an addictive chemical nicotine yeah and and i think that if you're 16 17 18 then maybe you could make an informed decision on whether you want to try something that you might develop a habit doing yeah whereas i don't know most 12 13 year olds that i know probably shouldn't be making that decision yet but then again, you know, like I say, I, I, I do see both sides of the coin, I really do. It, it's, it, it's, um, decision. it, it is a, an absolute quandary, I think, for, for everybody. And it's a quandary for parents. It has to be. Um, 
I think, I mean, in my part of the world at any rate, and I don't really know about anybody else's, but in this part of the world, it, we have one of the highest smoking prevalence rates in the whole of the UK, quite possibly worldwide. And that's kind of a historical thing. And I just, I keep looking at it and thinking, well, certainly when I was a young and, and when my daughter was uh, at school, and that's not all that long ago, there was this whole rite of passage into adulthood that included getting legless, yeah. getting weird, and getting your fags lit. That was basically where it was at. Um, and this, this whole notion of how old have you got to be in order to be able to take uh, responsibility for your own well-being. Yes, you know, 13 is quite possibly too young for many people, but I've come across some extremely bright 13 years. I think... That's a, a fair point. That, you yep. know, when, at, at what point... The, the age of criminal responsibility, for instance, is 10. So they reckon, the law reckons, when you're 10 year old, you're responsible for your own actions, for criminal actions. Below that, you're below the age of criminal responsibility. There are too many of these little ages all over the place. You can sign up with the army when you're 16, but as I found out today from a number of different sources, they're not going to put you where you're going to die until you're 18. But you can still sign up for the army. Yeah, I'm, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm confused by all of this. I've never really got it. I don't understand it. No, I, I'm not going to uh, claim that I can explain it either. <laughs> um, okay, I mean, I mean d d just uh, we'll, we'll talk some more about, about uh, the coverage uh, that the, the under-18s band's been getting. Uh, we've got a couple of web pages up and a few comments to pull out on that. Um, the, the other thing that, 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 um, that irked me somewhat about that piece on ITN as well was um, the, the, the phrase at the end that, that most sort of health professionals are uh you know have concerns and well, and and you know I, i'm not convinced that's the case anymore well if, if you look at the i hate putting people on top of the pile but I, I think it's fair to say that in terms of research the overall picture research robert west is probably up there right at the top of the pile if he's not on top of the pile and he tweeted yesterday that the majority of experts if you like, we're sitting in our corner and held the same view as we do, that these things that we use, e -cigs, promise a massive public health dividend and that, you know, they should not be too tightly regulated. They certainly shouldn't be over-regulated. They shouldn't be regulated out of existence. That's where he's coming from. And yeah, he, and the, the issue with that, though, is until people start getting specific, you know, we've heard a lot of people saying don't over-regulate these things. Um, Linda McAvan would have you believe that they're not. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's uh, it's not, not uh, precise, is it? It's not, uh, they're, they're, you know, our idea of, uh, of measured regulation is very, very different to some of the politicians. Well, I think that they, they tend to mistake the word regulation for the word control, and they don't know the difference. And I think the, uh, the politician's instinct is to control everybody and try and bring everybody into the one-size-fits-all criterion. And, and patently, that's never, ever going to work because people are different. They just are different. Um, I'm sitting here vaping on 36 milligram at the moment, but I dare bet you aren't. You'll be on 24, 25-ish, if I know you. Uh, I don't know. I mixed it myself. It's about 28 to something like that. I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, if, if, we, were, if we were to pull chat and ask a number of very, very simple questions, what milligram are you vaping? How long do you suck for? What wattage or voltage... Are you running at, or how? Uh, how? What's what's the resistance of your coil? I can almost certainly guarantee that of the 178 people that are in there, we would get 178 different answers when you put everything together. You certainly would if you then asked what flavour as well. Oh, that'd be the clincher. Put so. the flavour on it. Oh God, they're doing it. They're doing it. Yeah. But there you go. 18 milligrams, 67 seconds, 11 watts. Uh, eight milligram for as long as possible. Twenty milligram for three seconds. One point eight. One or three point. 
no, there's no two alike. There's, no, there's just not going to be two alike. There isn't, is there? There and never from, is. And, and somebody did mention in chat, and I'm sorry, I'm not Sav. I haven't got the hair for it. Um, well, somebody did mention in chat the whole consistency of dose. This, what we're bringing up here, it's, it's, yeah. not, it's not what you would call proper research, but my God, it tells a story. There isn't a consistent dose across that lot at all. Yeah, I mean, if you pick one and made that your consistent dose, the other 178 people in chat wouldn't thank you for it. That's the no. point. No, not at all. And I mean, I'm, I'm certainly not going to thank anybody who thinks I'm going to be able to survive on two mil tanks with 20 milligram juice. Get a life. <laughs> I'm wanting 54 milligrams as big as I can get because I get fed up with filling five mil tanks. Yeah. On Thursday... And this is no word of a lie, six five mil tanks of 36 to 54 milligram juice was what I got through. It was a bloody stressful day for me. It was, uh, it was, uh, uh, it was a stressful day all round, I think, Thursday. And, uh, you know, I, I, I tell you what, you know, uh, <laughs> just as an aside, if they want us to use less nicotine, they could stop winding us up so much, couldn't they? That would help. Uh, yeah, it would. Um, let's take, let's take our first break and then we'll come back. Yeah, go before, on. before we do, Dave, can go I just it. I just want to say a big thank you to chat because we didn't really ask them to type all that in, but they have, and they haven't half proved a point. And um, I, I, you know, that's it says it all to me. We're all individuals. We all have our own views, and anything other than allowing us to be individuals and having our own views is an iniquity and something that we just shouldn't. Be sure to give. Sorry to interrupt. I do apologize. It's absolutely fine. I would add to that. We don't need it either. No. Let's take an ad break. We'll be back in a minute and a bit. Cloud9 Vaping. Sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. And welcome back. Uh, right, okay. So, uh, just just uh, to, to to continue on this this, this I, you saw there in the ITV piece that, that what actually happened was that the, the the story was the government are introducing a ban on sale of electronic cigarettes to under 18s. Um, but the, the the sort of text around it, the the narrative around it, brought in. Uh, various other points that, that are a little bit irritating because a lot of them aren't uh, really sort of based in any science or fact and um, and one of them was that old chestnut the gateway argument again um, so I'm just going to flash up onto the screen now uh, every vapor's favorite newspaper the daily fail mail and uh, and and their wonderful contribution to the debate that appeared today uh, it's entitled Ban on Sale of Harmful E-Cigarettes to Children. Now, to be fair, they do put harmful in inverted commons. So, uh, I, why, I don't know, but they did. Uh, ministers to launch crackdown on underage smoking. So, apart from the obvious, you know, how does banning e-cigarettes crack down on smoking? But we'll let that one go for a minute. 
Uh, I'm not going to read this because it is the fairly typical Daily Mail dross. But uh, what I'll do is I'll read the bullet points at the top that summarise things. It tells us that e-cigarettes are thought to be safer, but long-term health risks are unknown. So uh, they, there's a new angle that they've dug out, Dave. Um, yep. Feared gadgets will give young people the taste for nicotine. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. And under-18s will be banned from buying them this week. Uh, also be illegal for adults to buy any type of cigarette for those under age. So it's basically a bit like alcohol restrictions that we're going to get. Uh, but the thing that I really wanted to pick up on on that one, Dave, is the uh, the good old gateway argument. Feared gadgets will give young people the taste for nicotine. Ah, just going to look at the camera and say, which, which bit of this don't these idiots get? <laughs> um there is absolutely bogger all evidence to suggest that kids will go from using no nicotine to using an electronic cigarette to going to smoking. Anybody that's used an electronic cigarette <laughs> and smoked will know that the only gateway leads in the opposite direction. Right? It makes no sense to go from something that tastes nice, costs next to nothing, and you know isn't going to kill you, you 99% time, 99% more safe, as they say. We're allowed to say that, aren't we? I believe Orders so. of magnitude safer. It makes no sense to go from that to something that we're told will kill one in two users, costs a fortune, and let's be honest, doesn't taste very nice. Unless, of course, it does taste nice to you. Well, yeah, I know, but your average kid... They don't smoke for the taste, do they, when they start mm -hmm. smoking? Yeah. They smoke because their mates are, or it's cool, or whatever. You know, uh, anything but the taste, I would say. I would say that most tobacco connoisseurs that I know, right, who, who genuinely do like the taste of burning tobacco, usually end up on cigars or pipes. Yep. Yeah? And, you know, so, so I don't see it. I mean, go on, Dave, have a go at Gateway. Well, look... Let's, let's do a little bit of maths, if we must. Um, the latest study that looked at this whole gateway malarkey has come up with the, uh, the prevalence, the gateway prevalence, the actual provable gateway effect happening in 0.077% of cases. Um, no. <laughs> Even, I mean, Ash, Ash UK, and let's face it, there's a set of people that have got a real downer on smoking, in all of their research, they've said, there is no gateway into smoking tobacco from e -cigs. Absolutely Robert West, right. Robert West has said it. Antoine Flahal has said it. Everybody, everybody that's got any sense has said it. It's only the rabid ants that have got this strange <laughs> idea that non-smokers would take up e -cigs and then move from e-cigs to lit tobacco. What they're confusing is the situation where, what would you do if these got taken away tomorrow? That's the question. What would happen if e-cigs were taken away tomorrow? And that's where the, pre the precautionary principle needs to come in. If these things got taken away, there are 1.3 million people in the UK and God knows how many, between 7 and 12 million in the EU, a large proportion of which would go back to smoking cigarettes full time. I could quite easily be one of them. And yes, I know there are those of us who have the wherewithal and the, and the knowledge to be able to carry on if we wanted to. And yes, I would. Um, but I'm talking about people that don't. Let's face it, this community that we're talking about is nearly 25, 30,000 people strong that actually have the knowledge. The rest aren't watching this, aren't on the forums, and so on and so forth. Yeah, 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 that's a fact. They wouldn't have the knowledge because it's going to be very difficult if they were all getting taken away. Where the hell are you going to buy them from? If you don't know how to bring it in from the States or China or where the hell ever, how would you? So just, just that's a point for, for the, the legislators and the regulators. If things were taken away, what would happen? 
And that's what they're confusing with the gateway effect. Yeah, yeah. Just, just on the, on that subject, uh, sorry to cut in there. I was, right, right. I was, you may have heard my mouse clicking away there trying to find on these, these web pages I've got to open, but uh, I'm just going to put up now. This is actually channel4.com. And um, because there was a piece earlier uh, with Jerry Stimson on Channel 4, I believe, and uh, I haven't seen that. And uh, we looked everywhere to try and grab, grab a clip of it, but couldn't find one. Because they're, they're not the quickest at putting stuff up on their catch-up, are they, Channel 4? They, they, they don't put the news up on 4 or day at all. Indeed, yes. Yes, we, we now know. Um, but there's a piece on there anyway, which kind of supported their news article. Um, and there's uh, they've actually got the question there spelled out, do teens smoke e-cigs? And um, it, uh, it's saying uh, some fear that children are turning to the smokeless devices uh, before moving on to traditional cigarettes. Um, I, I chopped a bit there. It says the smoke list device is designed to help users quit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's yet another issue. And, it, you know, th th there's another story here about, uh, you know, uh, what? Do why don't these people know that that's not just what they're for? Um, before moving on to traditional cigarettes. So the, the gateway argument. But um, it, it actually says, but smoking action group, Ash, say that it won't make much of a difference. And there's a quote here uh, from uh, somebody at Ash, and I can't remember who it was. I don't think he'd actually credits it. It just says, among children, regular use of e-cigarettes is extremely rare, a 2013 report by them found. Only one in 100 16 to 18-year-olds and 0% of 11 to 15-year-olds use e-cigarettes more than once a week. And it seemed unlikely that children would consider them a gateway into real cigarettes either. Quote again, few children expect to use an e-cigarette soon, except those who already smoke. Only 1% of those who have never smoked think that they would try an e-cigarette soon. Um, so, you know, they, they, I was quite surprised. I commented to you earlier that Ash are, that, OK, they, they've, they've been sort of privately and quietly supporting that point for a point of view for a little t a bit, bit of time, haven't they? But it's in this 2013 report that I haven't read. Have you read that? Yes. And uh, and now it's on Channel 4's website. So so well done to Channel 4 for actually digging that out, because there's some other sort of coverage we've had recently that hasn't bothered. Um, you know, so Ash don't think the gateway effect is an issue. Well, I mean, I've, I've spoken with Martin Dockrell from Ash at length, um, and he's firmly convinced that these are not a gateway into smoking, that they are a gateway out of smoke. And really, in terms of... Um, the Ash official stance and and my official stance, if you like, or our official stance, the only difference really is med regs. And I'm not 100% convinced that they're that convinced about med regs. I'm pretty sure that if a set of standards was drawn up that assured, I'm going to use the word purity, but you know what I mean. I don't mean absolute purity. But I'm pretty sure if a set of standards was drawn up that would be able to guarantee to a large degree, that e-liquids were not ever going to be nasty, i.e. didn't have um, diacetylene or any of the other stupid stuff. So really, you're suggesting something like what the community and the, uh, the more sensible trade bodies have been suggesting for some time? Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, bottom line on it, if you, if you go and buy in this part of the world, a poloni sandwich, you expect to find a poloni in it, and not, oh God, David, you're going to get yourself into trouble, but not Steady. something that looks like a poloni, but could be not, <laughs> if you say what I mean, if you know what a poloni is. Um, you, you, want, you want poloni and not a dog turd in the sandwich, that's basically what I'm saying. Nice and analogy, if, I like it. If there's a standard that says, you know, this is what it's got to be, then you know you're getting the poloni and you're not getting the dog jobbing, that's all I'm saying. And that, that's, it's dead easy to do. It's not hard. Good grief. It's, it's food standard hygiene. It's what we need. We, we, we had this debate some time ago, didn't we? Six months ago or something on what, like, sensible regulation might look like. And, and, and food standard hygiene or, or um, you know, the, the, the kind of regulations that, that are applied to booze. It's, you know, that's, that's, pro that's more appropriate than, uh, than what it looks like we're going to get stuck with, doesn't it? Well, yes, yes, absolutely. I'm trying to do a salve here. 
Making point, Liz says, ha, 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 Poloni eating the horse. No, Poloni's a pork sausage, but of a certain kind. If you're not from the northeast, you wouldn't know. It's, it's, it's a red, I'm not going any further into it, otherwise chat is going to have a fake game. Um, but I've just, just, I've just picked something up from chat here um, that had come in from, I think, Twitter. No, it's, it's uh, the BBC site that has had bazillions of replies. It sure uh, has, and we can show that, in fact. Yeah, you might even be able to pick this one up. It says, Robert, no, I'm the husband of a GP, so I think that makes me qualified to say that nicotine does cause cancer. Please don't just get your info from the pro smoking lobby or Wikipedia. Please do your own unbiased research. And by the way, none of my posts have been trolling posts. Please read the definition of trolling. I guess I'll see you both in the next cancer clinic. Um, you know, I'm the husband of... Uh, a head teacher. That doesn't make me qualified to say somebody's got the IQ of Einstein. Um, and I know people that are the husbands of mechanical engineers. That doesn't qualify them to say a bloody bridge made out of matchsticks is safe. So um, to the husband of the GP, you're wrong. You're not qualified. Keep your bloody nose out. It's not wanted. I know somebody that claimed to be qualified as a plumber and I had to get another one in the other day. Well, Please exactly. not be on the bugger. Just I'll get See, that in. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I tell you what. If, if if the stakes weren't so high, just reading comments on <laughs> on websites would be it'd be fun anyway, wouldn't it? The thing is, you you kind of I feel I've got to do it. Um, I feel I've got to try and keep up to, to speed with what everybody's saying, and and I, and I, I take on board an awful lot of tweets, an awful lot of comments on, on the BBC websites and various other places that open themselves up the comments. And what I keep on seeing is a, a gradual growth in support for ACs. An awful lot of support is growing for ACs because people are beginning to get the right idea. They're beginning to understand what these are. I mean, all of these news items that come up and say, and people use them mostly to quit. Seriously? Define quit. Because most people in the UK, and probably around Europe, when they hear the word quit, they think of nicotine cessation. And most people don't use them for nicotine cessation. They use them for nicotine maintenance, but removing the death. That's one of the messages we need to get through to everybody. We absolutely do. We, we do, we, because, uh, you know, because no matter how often we bang on about it, they don't seem to pick that bit up, do they? And, you know, and, and uh, I'm firmly believing at the moment it's because um, I think uh, I, I think just about every piece that we've seen in the last few days has, has that, you know, it's in the middle of a sentence like we just saw on that website, mm. which are designed to help smokers quit. You know, they just like, Put it in there as you know. The sentence reads well without that, <laughs> you know. But you know, I, I, I'm I'm getting a little bit more. What's the word? A little bit happier, if you like. Um, that now that we're starting to. I mean, we know for for a fact we saw Oliver Kershaw there, um, and uh, uh, on the ITV piece, the ITN yes. piece, yeah. And we, we know that that uh, at a very short notice, ITN tried very, very hard to get a vapor somewhere said to send a cameraman. You saw Oliver was in a shop, something that's probably halfway between where the cameraman and Oliver live. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. the, the fact of the matter is, they emailed me. Indeed. Did, just before lunch, they sent me an email, and they were going to send a taxi to take me to Gray's Inn Road, which would have been fine if I was anywhere near London, but I'm in Sunderland. Yeah, it, then I noticed in. that actually as I, as I saw it as the email yeah. came into our shared mailbox for it, the attention it, of Dave and I thought that looks like somewhere down south that post code I don't think he's going to make it <laughs> not, not in anything like reason I'd, I'd have gone I, I, I know you would have I know you would have but the, the point that I want to make there is that that you know um, and I think as a direct result of what happened at the, the Tonight programme I think now people are starting that, that, that you know that the news items have to have balance and they are approaching us. We know that Lorian from Echo, how many radio shows has she done in the last few days? Oh God, I don't know. At least a couple. I know she might have done some. She hasn't told us about. It. You know that they are actually starting to engage. 
and that gives us the opportunity. I listened to the uh, Radio 4 piece uh, where, where Lorian uh, w w w was on, uh, was it last night? Or the day before? Recently. There's a lot happened in the last couple of days. And, uh, and she spoke excellently. And, uh, and you know, with Edwina Curry in the room, I thought she was very well behaved, to be honest with you. Um, but, um, <laughs> you know, so, so th there is an opportunity now for us to be heard. And it's good that the uh, the news articles are seeking some balance and making sure that they have a vapour on board. Do you agree with that, Dave? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, given that, as I said, I'm, I'm totally transparent about all of this. The email came, I rang the, the, the girl back at ITN News, and she said, um, oh, right, okay, give me give me 10 minutes. I'm going to ring around all the cameramen that we've got up in the northeast and see if I can get a camera crew across to you. She was pulling out all the stops. I then offered, I said, because Kat, you know, you've, you said right at the top of the show, Kat thinks about things we don't. And she said, why don't you tell her you've got a bloody studio there, you numpty, and that all they need to do is send you the questions, you can answer them and then send the footage down. And I thought, all right, there you go. It's nice to have somebody <laughs> thinking with a clear head. I would I never offered, have thought of that. <laughs> it, did, it hadn't occurred to me. I offered that, at which point she said she had Oliver Kershaw. She'd been phoning round, trying to get hold of the vapor to go and put the vapor's viewpoint, if you like. And I'm, that says that says an awful lot to me, um, because it means they are trying to seek balance, they are trying to give us a voice, and the long may that continue, the more the millier. The more voice we have, the better we're going to be heard. I, I, I'm going I'm to go. I'm going to go full screen for this. I'm going to go to this camera over here and I'm going to say this and I've said it before I'm going to say it again right all we've got to do is tell them like it is and any rational person will know that we're in the right this is not your normal political argument where you know opinion could be ah oh, a cigarette's a good thing or a bad thing and I respect each other's opinion they're a good thing it's that simple okay that's not just me being biased. Show me some facts. Show me some evidence that they're not. And I'll reconsider, because I'm not an idiot. Sorry, Dave. No, no need to apologise. You're exactly right in what you say, Dave. Exactly right. And I'm 100%. Couldn't agree more. I think this is a good time to take a break, and then we can rip the piss out of Nicorette a bit. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Glamorisation. Quite looking forward to this segment. Oh, I am. I'm so looking forward <laughs> to this. See you in a bit. Cloud9 Vaping. Sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. in Yorkshire for your EC needs. That's iVapor.co.uk and iVapor-elixir.co.uk iVapor and iVapor-elixir.co.uk Proud sponsors of VaporTrails.tv And welcome back. Okay, right. So, um, yes, um, I, I, it appears I may have used a naughty word. Did you? In conjunction with this piece of shit that we're going to look at next. Oh, that piece of shit. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. Let, let's tell you where we're coming from on this. Uh, anybody that's on Twitter, this, 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 this uh, 
short 30 second piece of footage that we're going to show you will not be new to you um, but the reason that, that I wanted to mention it on the show tonight is we hear, we've heard a lot, haven't we, Dave, about glamorisation of smoking behaviour. Yes, from uh, from two sources in particular. One that's got a, a very slight Irish group and speaks in the mumble so nobody can understand a very he said and, and there's advertising in the doing like it. That mm-hmm. would be him. And then there's a very, very well-spoken jab up in Scotland that looks at all of this and glamorization of smoking behaviors. Um, the depiction of someone with what looks like a cigarette, you know, white and cylindrical between the lips. Of course, it's bind, absolutely bind, to get the children of the UK and all over Europe to take oh, and up... please do think care. of the children. Children, no, you must think of the children. I do, every day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And, and 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 it's also fair to say that that uh, uh, publicly uh, some of these people who believe that you know anything that uh, glamorizes uh, smoking behaviors and, and that obviously is they mean using e-cigarettes uh, renormalize it whatever you want these people would generally be proponents of nicotine replacement therapies wouldn't they things like patches and little plastic tampon things wouldn't they <laughs> Um, so if right okay the idea is to get yourself onto a medicinalized nrt program to reduce and finally quit the use of nicotine as opposed to just stopping the actual burning of tobacco type of smoking and doing what we do with our e-cigs explain this ad it's not new it's a few years old maybe they wouldn't get away with it but they're running it they're running it again they're running it again, are they? Oh, there you go. So, so, so breaking news on this show. Well, for me at least. <laughs> um, have a look. See what you tell me. What this is doing, in your opinion? thing to smoking without smoking whether you're cutting down gradually or quitting altogether the closest thing to smoking without actually smoking that's a lie well yeah i mean okay so there's two sort of angles of attack on this isn't there really dave let let, let, let's talk about the uh let, let's go all mhra and talk about the efficacy of that particular nrt product it's uh, shite um yeah just once more for the camera it's shite so um okay uh you know i'm by no means an expert on these things i'm certainly not a scientist uh but i think what you're saying to me is they don't bloody work no what i'm saying to you is the shite <laughs> in traditional spelling not only do they not work in my experience, and God knows I tried them often enough, they give you mouth ulcers on the side of the tongue. There's about as much enjoyment in using one as there is in having your piles lanced. Um, it's just not a pleasant experience. It doesn't actually stop you from wanting a cigarette. It doesn't take the edge off your craving. What it does is it makes you want a tab even more. They are and I use the word advisedly, and you know I very rarely swear on VTTV, they are a festering pile of putrid and fetid dingo kidneys masquerading as shite. Yeah, okay. Uh, one day you'll stop sitting on the fence, get down, and give us your, uh, your opinion on these things. Uh, right, okay, look. Now, I never, ever tried or even thought about trying an NRT product. Yeah, uh, I won't bore everybody with my story again. I bought my first EC because I walked past an Elite's Barrow in a shopping mall. I thought, cool, that looks like a good gadget. Found that I wasn't smoking cigarettes anymore. Upgraded to something decent. That that was my story, right? So I never went through the NRT loop, but I, I um I, I've. Uh, heard many many stories uh, uh fr- from other vapors now about all the different things they tried and this, this this thing is just universally renowned as a joke isn't it mm. 
Yeah, that's what I thought. It's, it's, it's not for nothing that they're known as the plastic tampon, and, and seriously, honestly, truthfully, would well, you be seen dead with one of those between your lips? Oh, it looked it just no, just <laughs> no. On so many levels, it's wrong. On a million, I mean, chats here. The only way that they're anywhere close to being the closest things to smoking is when you chuck the bloody things on the fire. Because <laughs> they don't work. And they taste that vile. The, next, I mean, oh, no, just, just, no. They're just no. rubbish. I, I get this. I get this. <laughs> okay, so, um, now, but, but obviously, the, you know, I, I think, uh, I won't say doctors, but, but the medical profession seem to think that, that you know, that, that this is the kind of route we should be going because e-cigs, uh, you know, um, aren't as safe. Because because that thing we just got, that we just saw there, is pharma-produced and has an MA, right? It's, it, it is a licensed medicine. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, now, bear in mind that the licensing pro, uh, system that the MHRA has got is, is supposed to uh, uh, it's supposed to make sure that that, that these products give e- efficacy. Well, yes, they, they have safety, quality, and efficacy. If I can just big Craig's just type in an alternative view on the uh, on the plastic tampon. Sure, he says tried them; they are shite and obviously don't work. Just an alternative view. Then. And that there, you know, in our scientific poll, that is the leading explanation that we've had tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's two out of two. You know, that's 100%. Um, but, but yes, okay, so, so we've got the efficacy. Um, the other thing is that the, 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 the uh, it's got to be safe, yeah? This is why proponents of NRT prefer pushing us down the NRT route than the ESIG route uh, to help us quit in inverted commas as they see it um and yet i'm just going to put up this picture now this this was doing the rounds on twitter i know it was sent into vttv or posted on the uh, vttv facebook page earlier it's doing the rounds. so again if you if, if you're a social media user you've probably seen this already um this is the uh, a list of ingredients in a nicorette product not the one we just saw this is actually their quick miss thing um and uh as opposed to an e-cig right now both of them have got propylene glycolin that's yep. fine um where the nicorette product has glycerol we generally have vg same thing yeah they've got flavor we've got flavor mm-hmm. and we all love nicotine it was some of the other things that are in there, and I hope this is big enough to read on screen. But I can see hydrochloric acid, throat hit, for the throat hit, mm-hmm. uh, and then some stuff I can't pronounce. There's some ethanol stuff in there, trometamol. Never heard of that. Never heard of that. But only an idiot would say that there is less risk with the product on the left than there is with the product on the right. Right. Only an idiot. Shall we sit here and make a list of idiots? Well, I think uh, I think we haven't got time for that, Dave. <laughs> make a short list. The list is long. I mean, it, bottom line on it is the the, the big objection that uh, big pharma has to ACs is quite obvious. It's robbing them of business. Yeah. And it's the same actual objection that big tobacco, if they have an objection, has. Um. It's robbing them of business. AC are robbing both big pharma and big tobacco of business. And in so doing, are denying governments worldwide revenue from tobacco taxes. Revenue that they're not going to get back when people relapse. Because and there is no, as yet no full scientific study to prove this. But everything I've read suggests to me that 48% of people who switch to e cigs full time remain switched. That is a full eight times better than NRT. More to the point, the other fifty two percent haven't discovered the good stuff. They're the people that fell off the wagon when there was only generation one stuff available. And, and of course when the EU bans those shortly they're not gonna see them either. 
exactly. and, and and that's and 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 it's worth pointing out as well. I'm just reminding people, it's kind of a double edged, it's a double whammy as well for the pharmaceutical companies if we're if if e cigs carry on as they are, because they lose the sales on NRT, but they also are going to lose a lot of money on cancer treatments. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, so so I I, th- I think we're all pretty clued up on why we're getting the opposition. Um, now that that was the, the the just going back to the Nicorette thing because there's another angle to that that I want to cover as well. Okay, so 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 we've spoken about like the the the, the quality of the product, um, and and the possible safety of the product because I don't like the idea of inhaling hydrochloric acid, frankly. Uh tried it once not on a school night anyway and no. and um the but there is another angle and this is this whole glamorization and renormalization of smoking behaviors and uh we do know that uh mr mckee professor mckee who was uh, uh on the itm piece earlier has spoken about glamorization hasn't he frequently and uh <laughs> and what to talk about glamour and and the basic point there is that obviously if uh, if people are seen to be using an e-cigarette, right, that's a bad thing because it looks a little bit like smoking, right? Even if you're using something like Dave's got in his hand, and I've got something that demonstrates the point just as well. Um, they're worried that the act of using this may renormalise the idea of people smoking when when they're actually you know believe that they're stopping people smoking even though they're not. Um, explain to me then, right, how the <laughs> cowboy with that bloody thing in his gob in that ad and glamorous actresses and uh, and uh, the, the the distinctly French looking jazzy scene there, right. And 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 if you, how, why isn't that glamorising and the, the you know the be, the smoking behaviour? I mean, it's the same, isn't it? I'm good. Well, I'm going to ask you a very personal question. How old are you now? I'm going to work it out. Forty-six. Okay, so I've I've got eight years on you. I can actually remember when there were television adverts for cigarettes, and I Me remember too. each each of those one. Do you know what they keep on saying? The e cig manufacturers are employing exactly the same tactics as the cigarette manufacturers in the 50s and 60s. That's exactly what that bloody advert does. That is basically a direct copy of some tobacco advertising. And, and you know, and let's let's be honest, let's cut to the quick. The rationale is, yeah, but that's glamorising a good way of stopping smoking that we're making a profit from. Yeah, and, and t- I'm telling you now, the minute they bring the vote out, and the other one was due out apparently in April, Apparently, there's another one. The minute they come out, they, that 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 will be glamorising smoke. And even though both of them look exactly like a cigarette, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. double standards, my no, no yes, no, no. double standards indeed. And um, it, it's yeah, I, I just don't get it. <laughs> I just don't get it at all, to be honest with you. Um, so we've pretty much covered that lot off. Um, so, I mean, just just, just to summarise and wrap up a little bit tonight, uh, I just want to say that, you know, we, we, we've we've had a pop at a few people tonight for some of the media coverage that we've had. Uh, we all know that there have been flaws um, in the science and what's been pronounced as as, as fact in, in, in every article that's been out this week. Mm-hmm. However, they're talking about it, aren't they? Do you know that's the big thing? That's I mean, Chris Choi on Thursday night said that his intention was to open the debate. And whether you think the program was good and balanced or pants and a pile of festering dingo kidneys, it actually doesn't make any difference in the long run. Well, it does. And the difference it makes is that we now have a voice. If ITV is, is scrabbling all around the country to get a vaping representative onto a new show, that can only be a good thing. The fact that Jerry Stimson was on Channel 4, good thing. Robert West on Sky, good thing. This is, it's going to take, not necessarily front and centre, but whenever there's anything now about, because it's controversial, they are going to seek opinions from both sides, if you like, of the argument. And, and I that, think, that's the clincher for me, OK? Right. The, I wouldn't, we've got no skeletons in the closet, right? Our cause is a just one. It's it, we're right, okay. But there are people that want to shout us down. But 
and we they were always going to get louder they were always going to share the airspace with us yep. yeah um so so let's not be disheartened um let's just try and counter all this crap as they print it or speak it absolutely i think as dave says we're in the right we do have right on our side and we have some very very learned people on our side we certainly do if you're asked your opinion share it we have the voice let's use it and i think that's a good place to leave it tonight dave so dave i will thank you for being my guest tonight it's not a problem any time, dear boy. I'm always happy to share the screen with you, you know that. And I do hope your leg gets better. So do I. It's throbbing like a bitch at the minute. <laughs> uh, but that's it for this week. Uh, tomorrow night, you're back, aren't you? Tomorrow night. I am, yes. yes. With uh, the Hazard. And on I should want it depth on this. What is it? It's uh, a mod. <clears throat> it's a secret, folks. It's I'm, a secret. I'm not giving, not giving Tune in. 9pm tomorrow. Yes, suffice it to say, I've never found a button button mod I really like, but I like this one. Fair enough. And on Tuesday, we've got Vapor Scene and DE Talk. And on Wednesday, we've got Team Talk. And on Thursday, we have VT Talk. We and may I've just have got... Nicky Sinclair. With Nicky Sinclair. Oh, great. Maybe, okay. maybe, maybe. Oh, maybe. Okay. Having met Nicky, uh, it will be good to see her on VT Talk. Um, and. Uh, Let's face it, the way the last few days have gone, I think there's going to be plenty of uh, stuff to be going through on Thursday, isn't there? Mm. And then we would then be back round to me next Sunday. Uh, I'm just going to give a quick plug for RY4 Radio. That's ry4radio.com because uh, I was on there really late last night having a whale of a time pretending doing an impersonation of a DJ. Uh, those guys have got a great setup. Tune in, listen to them. They were on after this show. 10 o'clock tonight, Rusty. Tune in, give them a listen. Uh, but now I've got to get off the air. So uh, thanks for watching and good night. Of Dave's Tackle Box.